Hello. Um, this painting uh, was recently purchased by Julie uh, in the States. Uh, she's a friend of Mark Cateroy. And uh, I wanted to tell you about this painting and why this is the first time I've, I've done it. Um, oh, good morning. <laughs> this is the first time I've done one of these types of videos. It's and I'll explain why. So, what inspired me to do this work? Well, there was, my sister was doing a 100 day yoga challenge. Uh, Mark, my lifelong friend, dickhead, Cateroy, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say that, but I've known Mark now for uh, 28 years and he uh, has been a, a, a great friend and I've I had all these people doing these things where they were really kind of pushing and challenging themselves in their passion and and in their in their own way so I I was really kind of inspired by that so what I did was I just decided to do this thing called March Marathon and so what I decided to do was for every day for the entire month of March I went to this one location on the bridge of Mackenzie King Bridge and I would do a painting from one painting per day. And at the end of it, I had 31 works of art completed. And it was absolutely really hard to do. Uh, like, wow. <laughs> like it was the, the demands, the, the creative demands, the physical demands, um, the getting the materials, um, when you're doing a painting like this every day or something even larger, something smaller, you have to buy all the materials and you have to get all the materials. Um, going out there, rain, shine, minus 26, a snowstorm, uh, a blue sky. Uh, and at times I, I push myself to do night paintings on top of that, which was, um, <laughs> that's another challenge. But what was extraordinary about it is that, and the reason why I'm making this video is that uh, the person who has, who just had to buy it and saw it and was like, yes, I have to have this, this kind of, this, this, this feeling like I, I, this is the one for me instantly. Um, she's, or Julie, you have done over t you've completed you finished over 10 Ironmans and so I know this I've been I I'm not that strong I can't do Ironmans I, 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 uh, but I know my friend Mark does and I've seen how dedicated he is and and in my own passion in my own way I've I've been painting now uh, I would I would say relentlessly uh, with all of my heart and soul for uh, the last 28 years and and what I found while doing this particular series was that because I was going out every day every day every day and painting and and pushing myself what was so amazing about that experience was that you spend eight or ten hours being on a bridge staring and meditating and being completely open your whole entire soul your whole and creatively the level of 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 um, light that goes through your skull it's almost like your all your skin melts off your off your your skeleton like candle wax and you are and the wind just blows through you like, like, 
like a bird flying through the sky and you reach this state of of being of creative centering that you are just breathing and you are just moving and you are just you, you have this absolute freedom you have this just complete euphoria inside of you that you've you've achieved and you it's it's phenomenal uh to be to just be that determined and that focused and and to do that and to feel the snow melt on your face but not feel the cold to to have your eyes feel the wind but you're you're just free and buses and people can walk by because you're on this this major transport road where and you are literally so entirely focused that uh, nothing nothing kind of breaks that kind of that connection and so I know that someone who would do an who's done over 10 Ironmans <laughs> and done that kind of training would definitely find this on a soul level on a on a on a parallel kind of way would really connect to this particular work and it was just when 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 you look up close you'll see little spots in the painting and that is from the snow landing on the actual canvas on that particular day it had kind of dandruff kind of flakes of snow that were blowing and kind of it, it was not a perfect not, not a perfect day by any means and I managed to capture something but the um, you'll see just all the little snow snow drops and when I brought it home and put it in my living room or in the hallway I, I believe I I hung everything up on the hallway all the water would just start dripping <laughs> and and all this once I brought it into the warm the the painting kind of like started sweating I guess is the best way to put it and there was a little bit of a puddle on on the on the hardwood flooring um, and some of the demands were that I had in that month I I went through so much paint and so much canvas um, I ended up buying every tube of white paint in in Gatineau Orleans Bell's Corner at Michael's at Wallach's at the Serres I I was just inhaling so much materials at that time and luckily enough um, Wallach's went over and reordered so I was able to get more paint and so I was able to continue and so I um, so that was that was amazing um, and the uh, in terms of the painting itself there were things I wanted to go over and when you for me when I do a, a landscape painting I, I I I feel that it's really important not to take a picture and go back to your studio but to be in that environment to to completely be to connect with what you're you're painting because the accidents or the nature of everything happening in the world at that time the 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 movement of the sky the the wind all of those things dramatically impact your painting to have uh just an authenticity and you can really feel the 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 branches of the the trees because your fingers are like you know they're they're like you're you're literally like you have to focus so intensely when it's like i think this was around minus 18 on that day um 
minus 18, minus 20. It was very windy, so the, the wind chill was even higher. And, and the amount of determination and focus that is required to get that painting, to, to really get that painting done on, a, on like an unconscious level, you, you start kind of rendering spaces that are where you're, you're part of that moment. And I, and so for me, I chose this location because it, it had the, the three arches, one, two, three, and then it had one, two, had two, one, two, and then there's like a circle in the middle and then a square and a square and then a bridge and then a circle, 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 and then an opening and the geometry of that particular subject matter is what really captivated me was to have um, to be able to move into the painting to um, to allow the emotional landscape to be uh, a part of you and then the way that the trees are and then the technical elements of scraping away the paint and and there's a, a few kind of techniques that I love and I'll show you up close so on a technical level, you will see, can I get it right in there? So when you look, you'll see how it's scraped right there. And then it's, it's pulled. And then it's the same thing over here. It's, it's scraped. And what I do is I get a, a palette knife and I butt it and I scrape along the, the, the back of it. And that's a technique that Rembrandt would do. When Rembrandt, um, one of the things that was so amazing and what made Rembrandt such a master painter is that he, in his, in his eye sockets and in his shadows and under his nose and inside his ear and under his chin, what he would do is he would put his paint down and then he'd scrape it with the, with the palette knife. And then that was what caused um, something called transparency. And that was, um, and then he also would put this little touch of red in there and he would put red in the, in the edges. I didn't do it so much, but I put the reds over, let's see here, let's get this camera correct. Can I find that? And just wait, where is it? You will see the reds right here all tucked in. And the reds and the placement of the red. So I really started kind of appreciating how you, you place the, the reds on the edges. You place it right on the edges and you use that red everywhere to kind of thread the whole painting together. Um, and that's something that when you look again at a Rembrandt painting and you look at one of his ears, or if you look at a Van Gogh painting, his chair, or you look at a Gauguin painting or a Soutin painting, when they do the animal flesh or the portrait, between the, the opaque surface and the, um, the dark shadow, right on that bridge, they would just put a little flick of red. And that, that's something I tried to incorporate because I just love the tradition of painting and, I, and every color has a system and a, a technical value. And those are some of the things that I was kind of pushing myself with. Um, and then just the paint itself, the, the canvas is very heavy. Uh, many of my canvases actually, I had to modify the way I was painting and and the frames because they were blowing off my easel and one of them actually blew right off and, and ripped in the middle. And that was another thing I was like, fuck. And so I had to go all the way and get a new one. Another day, the, the gesso, I, I bought the wrong kind of primer for the, the canvas and it started to crack. So I had to rush over to Wallach's again and, and get a replacement canvas. Um, 
so working in those kind of elements and during that kind of night is <laughs> really fucking crazy. Anyways, thank you so much and uh, live, love, art.